I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless. Today is, well, I'm not really keeping track of the day since I'm on vacation in the wonderful Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And I, being the crazy geek that I am, I brought along my three printers on my vacation, much to the chagrin of my wife. So she's laughing at me, but she's enjoying it. And in this video, I'm going to talk about UPS, uninterruptible power supplies for your 3D printer, which turns out to be a good thing if you're taking them on vacation. Okay, let's go over some quick URLs, then we'll talk about my story. Okay, so first of all, here's a link, and it happens to be an affiliate link, so I can make all the big bucks, right? But if you need a power supply, you can go click on this link, and um, that I'll provide in the show notes. But here's an APC UPS uh, Anitra power supply uh, that I just bought. I actually, I actually had it. My son came up a day late to this vacation, so I shipped to our house from Amazon, and he brought it up so that we could solve a problem I had. Um, but also, here's another link over here on Power Panic, and this is kind of what happened. Now, um, for those who don't know, uh, well, first of all, Proust does a great job. Proust has a lot of uh, safety features in here. So one of the things that they have, which I probably, I've seen it occur on occasion, where all of a sudden there's kind of some kind of power interrupt. Now, it could be your power goes off. We all know that sometimes you have power hiccups in your in your house. All of a sudden, you know, your lights flash and come back on. And I wasn't around here for the olden days, you know, talking five, ten years ago, when things were a little more difficult, that if you had a problem, and it still occurs in some models of printers, that if all of a sudden your power goes out or has a glitch, even just for a few seconds, you're done. Your 3D print's gone, ruined, it's, you, you can't continue. Uh, so a lot of printers now have safety features. Proust is one of them, where all of a sudden if there's a power supply issue, there's still enough juice, it's probably got some capacitors in there, to kind of keep it alive for a minute to wait for the power to come back on and uh, then try to reset itself. Now, um, and that's what happens. I've had that happen before on rare occasions because my power at home is really reliable. Um, but, but, on this trip, you know, we're up in the Rocky Mountains, and it happened to have a big snowstorm uh, just a few days ago here in Denver, in Colorado in general. Um, and with that, you can have a little bit more supply, uh, power supply issues. You know, you get a lot of snow on the power lines. You might have a few power lines break. Some trees fall over, hit a power line, and you might have some disruption. Um, or just, uh, you might even have, um, I don't know how to call it, brownouts, because we don't really have so many brownouts around here. But all of a sudden, there might be some spikes or some lowers. You might have powers. You might have some glitches. But anyway, at any rate, the first night we were here, my whole, my whole plan on this vacation was to have a vacation. Uh, but I needed to bring, I wanted to bring my 3D printers, stick them in a corner, because there's some long prints I want to get done for this homeschool conference. So there's this, actually this big T-Rex skull that's double the size of the, the one I posted earlier on printables. Because uh, I'd like to get at least one of those printed out for the homeschool conference. And it takes, man, it's probably going to take about four-ish days to print that out with a 0.15 layer. So a long... You know, each part's like a day plus. I got one printed out. It's actually more than two days. I think it's 60 hours. Uh, so with that in mind, um, that, that was the idea. Put them in a corner, push a button, have my vacation. Um, but uh, the first night, we had all these power interrupts, you know, probably nine times. And because of the storm um, is what I'm thinking now. We just had, uh, we didn't really see the lights glitch, but I think we may have seen some voltage, you know, go up and down because actually I had the mini next to the i3 Mark III and they both have different internals and I love my i3 Mark III and I love my mini um, but the mini for whatever issue we were having I don't think it was an out a power outage I think it was probably some voltage spikes some little volt you know um, that, that's my theory because the mini did not have a problem it never it never stopped once but the i3 Mark III uh, had these power interrupts and so they all went through the night now, every single time it recovered, and I'll show you the results of it, um, but when you recover, sometimes you might have a layer shift because it might not remember very well where it was. So I was printing this guy out, and it happened, there was probably several times it occurred where it recovered perfectly, no layer shift. But I had so many, ha you know, you're, you're, you're rolling the dice. So it had so many times happen that eventually I have several different layer shifts. And I was like, well, this is not going to work. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do about this? So the solution, which I probably should have had one of these around a long time ago, is basically a battery backup. Um, so for those of you unfamiliar with this, if you're in the, in the computer industry, you're very familiar with these things, you have these un, un, uninterruptible power supplies. So the idea is you basically have all your equipment plugged into something like this, and there's a battery in this. So this actually acts as a surge protector. You know, it kind of cleans the power up. So in the case where we had these spikes, it may not have relied on the battery, but it probably would have protected from the surges and probably kind of evened out that power and made it cleaner so I wouldn't have had those issues. But also if I lost power, this can run the machines for a certain period of time. 
And in fact, we'll go over some of the cool stuff. It'll actually, if you if you're running something, and let's say it's you know using 100 watts, uh, you can look at the display. It'll say how many minutes based on that current usage it'll actually run if the power gets cut. Um, so it's kind of got some cool features, and also it'll tell you. Uh, how many events occurred. So I'm very curious about that because after I plugged this guy in, um, it came up the next day, the storm was over, all the power had been fixed. I haven't had an event happen since here up in the mountains. So I am curious to see this in the long run because I don't think I have it happen at home. I don't think it's going to probably happen here again on my vacation, but I do wonder how many prints I have lost in the middle of the night because of a, a power glitch that I didn't notice. Um, or that recovered, and I had a little bit of a little weird line that could have been better. Um, so I'm curious when I get home, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to plug all my stuff in. Now this is going to be my go-to. And, you know, how many events occur after, over a six-month period? Because I bet you I'm not going to notice anything. I'm going to wake up one day, and I'm going to go push the button to tell me how many events occur. And I'll be like, wow, five events have occurred in the last two months. That I didn't know that probably saved some prints. Um, anyway, so that is my wonderful story and why I bought this. But, you know, this is probably something you should just have. And I'm late to the game. Something you had to have years ago. And now, because of the, if you're in a place with good power like I am, usually, and because of some of the proofs of features that, you know, will auto-fix this thing, I have gotten away without it. But it's a good idea to have it for many, many reasons. Now, before we go up and show off all this stuff, one thing to make note, um, because I probably... It's plugged in right now, so I probably can't pull it off, pull it back, and show you behind. Um, but if you buy one of these un uninterrupted power supplies, well, two things: when you get one of these things, they got a battery. Uh, usually, it's a sealed gel battery, um, so kind of old school, but very reliable. It's going to work for years and years, and they're easily re easily replaceable. Um, but when they ship those, there should be a note on there that it was on mine. The battery is not connected. So basically, there's a notes on there how to do it. you got to open the compartment and connect it because they don't want the battery connected while they're shipping. So be aware of that if you order one of these. Um, also, if you look on the back, you can see here on this picture is battery backup on the left and surge on the right. Now, truth be told, wherever you plug it, you're going to get that surge protection. So you're going to get that beautiful protection. But if you plug it in on the right where the surge is, you don't get battery backup. So they actually add a couple extra plugs in there that aren't battery backup because maybe you want something with a surge protection but you're not too concerned about battery backup because maybe you have, as an example, let's say you had some servers. You don't want your servers on the battery backup. But what about your monitors? If your monitors go dark, maybe you don't care. So maybe you put those in the surge. So make sure with the 3D printers that you're plugging them into the battery backup, not the surge. Otherwise, you're not going to get that experience. And also, a good idea to test it, I would plug this in plug all your printers in, make sure it's going, and then have them print something short and simple. And while they're both printing, go unplug this from the wall, which I'll do here in a minute. And you'll see the battery will take over and there'll be no interruption. So with that, let's go look at this and see what we can do and kind of show it off. Okay, so here's my vacation setup. So here's the power unit. And you can see it's pretty significant size, but not too bad compared to everything. Um, and... I'm not going to go every detail over this because I don't know every detail yet. But if I go click on this, I can see my current load between the two machines. I can see my battery there is powered all the way up. It's charged all the way up and good to go. And there's my load, 20% of load. That's an important thing you need to consider. With, with two machines, this is more than enough. But if you want to connect more and more machines, you know, you can only handle so much, so much load. Think about that. And there's our volt, current voltage. Output in hertz input voltage and here's the key events so that's the events uh, it's had two events since I plugged it in and that was actually me unplugging it to see what happened and the next one based on a current usage how much time would it run if it was unplugged or lost power in this case 28 minutes 29 minutes is pretty good so what I'm going to do even though these prints have been running for a while is test it out this should this should work so down here I got this guy plugged into the wall and if I unplug it, we should see everything continue happy-go-lucky. So I'm unplugged, and we're just running on the battery right now. That's kind of nice. So now if I plug it back in, we can see no hiccup, no hesitation. All's good. 
And of course, I think you, I don't want to do this, but you can set this up to be an audible alarm. And I think you can connect it to computers so you can do some other thing, but I don't want to do that. So now I can go here. And I bet you if I go to events, I should have three events. There's my third event. That was man-made. All of them these are man-made in this case, but I'd be curious when I go home, if I plug this in, how many events do I have? I, I bet you they're not often, but I bet you, I bet you over the months they'll add up. So anyway, there's that working okay so there you have it um, I would recommend buying it is it a must-have uh, not for the initial like I like to you know help all these homeschoolers out and starting out and you don't want to spend too much money so hey if you're gonna go buy a Prusa Mini and you're gonna print I would you know if you're starting out get a Prusa Mini print a few things um, but then when you, and if you have some interruptions you lose a print you know every month or two and you something messes up not a big deal you can move on but when you start getting more serious and you want to print a lot and that becomes a pain when you lose something, especially especially if you're printing something. Well, you know, I take this back a little bit. Anything, anytime you're printing things that take days, you just want this, you know, because this is a huge protection for a relatively cheap price. You know, here I'm paying 150 for this uh, currently. And you can get smaller ones. You don't really need a lot of power, a lot of battery. Basically, a lot of these is basically, you can get bigger and bigger ones based on battery capacity. So uh, my suggestion, mm, Maybe not the first thing you get out of the gate when you're starting 3D printing, but probably one of the one of the things you want to add. And I honestly, I should have added this years ago. You know, I got away with I got hey I got away with it without this for years. So hey, I'm an example. You don't need it, need it. Um, but man, I, I bet you it's going to save some prints over time. But with that, let's wrap this up uh, with a reminder that <laughs> that 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge. You can take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this, business out of this, and you can you can teach others, and you can make some amazing designs. So, design it, engineer it, and it may be a good idea to get a battery back up too. I'm printing out a few useful things we need on our vacation. One of them was a fully 3D printed bottle opener by Odo. Check out the printables object six seven seven five nine. I printed the original, but it looks like he has an improvement. I'm surprised it's been working better than I thought it would, so go check it out.